Hey everyone, and welcome to a special Digital Foundry Direct where we're going to be talking about Halo Infinite. There was a technical preview last weekend and it was available on all systems, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles and even PC. So a lot of systems to cover here, which required three people uh, to do the work. And joining me first of all, playing on Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X, John Linneman. Rich, how's it going? I got I got lucky and got the uh, higher end consoles for this one. So, uh, whereas you got stuck playing on uh, the last gen machines. So, <laughs> yeah, I played on Xbox One S and Xbox One X, and um, yeah, I, I just really wanted to see how they've managed to scale that system. Yeah, um, but fundamentally, at the top end, in theory, we've got the PC version, and for that, we had Alex Batalia. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe a blessing and a curse. We'll talk a bit about that in a minute. But I also had some good fun this weekend playing Halo Infinite. Yeah, yeah. I think um, let's first of all talk about the sort of general impressions we had. I mean, obviously, we've seen a bit of real-time gameplay in the past, and uh, it was hugely controversial. A lot of technical issues there that we highlighted. And uh, we had some indications from 343 that they were going to address that. Mm -hmm. um, but fundamentally, I think from a gameplay perspective, and I think even from a visual perspective, the overall feedback uh, from us and certainly from uh, the community based on social media is that this is, this is actually shaping up to be really impressive. Right, John? Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, for me, uh, Halo is probably one of the last games I played in terms of competitive multiplayer at all. Uh, I really never got on with Call of Duty and the like that well, and um, you know, 343, their stuff has been divisive, but I really feel like for this one, it really feels like they're moving in the right direction. Uh, it feels like a really, really nice fusion between classic Halo from Bungie and the more modern Halo style, uh, and it works. I mean, it's, it's really well done. It, the controls are just pitch perfect. Uh, some of the new moves like the grappling hook are phenomenal, uh, you know, things like that. Like it just, it feels great to play. It sort of recaptures a lot of the feelings that I had from playing classic Halo so far, but obviously with some changes. And then as you say, uh, and we'll talk a lot more about this, but the visuals themselves and the audio, I would say mostly, uh, feel significantly more refined and it's come a long way since last year's showing. So I'm really happy so far. So Alex, uh, you were on point for our technical analysis of the real-time gameplay trailer that was uh, quite divisive and a little bit disappointing. But I think it's generally good news here in terms of the improvements. I mean, obviously we're looking at a completely different section of the game, but the core engine, there are some fundamental improvements, right? Yeah, for sure. For one, um, I would just say the general material response, as John put it in some of our previous discussions on this, is uh, much better yep. than we saw in that initial um, kind of campaign preview video uh, over a year ago now almost. And I think that that comes from a variety of uh, things. Uh, as part of it, I talked in my video back then about the game's lighting and that there, there was some misunderstandings about that where people just think it is only about the time of day it is running at. It's not just that, it's mm. the, uh, the technology they use to drive their indirect lighting, which has such a large effect on the way they do materials and the way the game just generally looks. That's what the video was about. And here in the uh, tech preview playthrough that we have access to now, uh, the multiplayer maps actually have rather excellent indirect lighting. Yeah, uh, which. Uh, this was key. So I think uh, this technology they're using for uh, indirect lighting these uh, multiplayer maps will probably be different than the one that we see in the campaign because these multiplayer maps, they can have just one time of day. They're static. Uh, they can spend the time to really maybe bake out textures, lighting textures for these maps and really make sure that all of the cube maps are perfectly aligned and all these really good things. So I think uh, that's one of the reasons why these look so good is because they're so you know, carefully crafted arenas uh, and they look really excellent as a result. Uh, so I can't say what the campaign will look like, but at least in terms of materials, um, they're already doing that much better. Another thing that I thought was really cool, uh, and I know uh, John could talk a bit about this, is how uh, their materials look a lot better now due to the way they're using screen space reflections, which I don't really think was really other than on bodies of water in the initial campaign footage we saw. Yeah, that's kind of the main thing is like now things like metal especially really showcases as well. And and there's sort of subtle diffuse reflections that really sort of uh, tie the environment together really well. And when you combine that with the aforementioned indirect lighting, everything just looks a lot more natural, um, you know. And 
this Halo is a tricky one to do art wise, and we've said this before because technically the Forerunner style architecture it's sort of often derived from more simplistic shapes, right? Uh, For sure. And they've done a really nice job of sort of arting that stuff up in a way that sort of retains sort of the Halo signature, although obviously it varies. Like the bizarre map is very Halo too, if you will, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But what I I really like about the visual design is that they've managed to uh, create very nice looking materials and structures, but also it has this great readability to the map. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like in terms of a multiplayer game, the visual design here is, is excellent and it's both serves the gameplay and it looks visually attractive. So I'm really happy with the direction they're going here. Also the, uh, the weapons, the weapons look great. The new weapon models I think are excellent in this one. Um, yeah, they're awesome. You know, they they've kind of come and gone in terms of how they look for throughout the various three four three games, but I'm really happy with the current designs, and the general sound as well is relatively punchy. Um, so yeah, all in all, yeah. it's it's shaping up really really well for me. Uh, I'm very yeah. I'm very uh, encouraged by what we're seeing here. Do you think this uh, gameplay that we saw, I mean, it was limited to bot matches, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the scale and size of the maps, it wasn't exactly huge, well, was it? Well, no, so first of all, uh, I believe they did open up proper PvP very late, nice later second. on, right? Very late, but you're right, it was mostly bot we matches. <laughs> um, but I will say that, you know, Halo maps have traditionally not been large, and I don't think that they should be. Uh, mm -hmm. Halo is much better played when you're in these tight maps. And I think the you know getting a, a good Halo map down requires a lot of different paths through the same areas and different vantage points, and it, it should feel really layered. And I, I think that they've actually got that down well. Um, it hasn't gone to Call of Duty, if you know what I mean. So. No, it's still very <laughs> vertical. For example, each map had at least almost three layers. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much every map every, had three layers of height. In it, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. In terms of uh, other visual things that I really like, John was talking about uh, the gun models and the gun materials looking really great. I think that's just a general change in art direction that they've gone with Halo 5 now, where they they were said they were going for this like cleaner aesthetic that was more reminiscent of Halo 1, but they've done some stuff on top of that. Like in Halo 4 and 5, they went for this like what is called like Greebles look for everything. Yeah. Everything almost looked like it was like like Doom 3 texturized in yeah. a way. I don't know how to explain it. Um, uh, everything looked almost over-designed. And now uh, things have more simple shapes, but they still have actually a surprising amount of detail when you get up to the structure of them. They have like, you know, like tiling detail textures and things like that. Uh, so like I really liked looking at the side of the uh, battle rifle, for example, like has like really awesome detail, texture detail in there. So that was one thing I just really wanted to praise because uh, the initial video, the gun detail was like pretty poor. Like there was not even shadows on the guns in the yeah, initial video. Exactly. They actually have shadow maps from your hands and the key. guns on the guns now. That that looks really a lot better. At the same time, you know, it is worth pointing out that it's still not like we're not looking at super cutting edge next gen visuals here necessarily. Like it's a very attractive game, but it's not pushing any new boundaries. And I think that probably mm -hmm. comes down to the fact that it is a cross gen game. Um, you know, like materials like these stones in this little tunnel, they look awesome from a distance, but when you get up close, you can still sort of see their limitations and there's a lot of stuff like that. But I honestly don't think it's a big deal overall. And relatively speaking, I think, um, they've achieved the visual goal they set out to, at least in the multiplayer side. And obviously now we just have to wait to see what they're doing on the campaign. Yeah. When you consider but, free to play multiplayer games though, there's not that many that actually look, I think this good. Oh, I uh, absolutely yeah. not. I mean... Tech, you're right. This is free to play, but it's also part of a bigger package. So I'd still mm -hmm. kind of lump it alongside other competitive <laughs> shooters, but I'd certainly rather play this thus far. <laughs> so I think the use of bots is probably quite a big surprise. We didn't really expect that going into a technical preview, but um, I think the bots are actually really good. And I've got to give a <laughs> shout out for uh, 343 Salt Baron, <laughs> which was my favorite bot. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's actually a title I'd like to have myself. The Salt Baron. But, uh, I mean, obviously, the, the intelligence there was, was quite interesting, wasn't it? It's not as if these games... Yeah. I mean, t traditionally, bots are basically cannon fodder, but that wasn't the case here. Yeah, I was really impressed with their general behavior, um, you know, whether they're challenging or not. And I, thought, I think they found a really nice balance, actually, where they felt reasonably challenging, but, you know, it's still easy enough to take them down. But if you actually watch their behavior... 
uh, they they kind of play like to a degree like you might expect some people to. You know, mm -hmm. I was really impressed when I saw them, you know, fire off a few shots, take down a shield, and then run up and melee them. You know, yeah. and you see them sometimes running together, using grenades. Uh, grenades, you know, is, yeah. Just the way they behaved was really, really impressive. And it's very cool for bots, but it actually gives me more hope for the campaign. Because uh, it really does feel like they're doing something cool with the, with the AI. And I think this is actually going to be something that people should really watch closely. Because Halo was mm -hmm. known for excellent AI. Uh, and I feel like it hasn't been talked about in recent years. Because it just kind of felt a little bit samey with Halo 4 and 5. But I get the feeling that we might be looking at something very special here in terms of the way enemies behave. So, Yeah, Halo as a series was always pretty interesting because it has like uh, different archetypes of enemies... And uh, each one, you know, when you, uh, for example, kill an elite and there's a bunch of grunts or jackals around them, the grunts and jackals react very differently to the death of the elite and it will change the whole tactical dynamic. So I think if these bots are any indication about how uh, responsive the AI is, uh, then we could have some, you know, pretty interesting stuff for us happening in the campaign it's, soon enough. It's also another thing I love about Halo still is the fact that it's very up close, right? Like a lot of military shooters, they're very focused on taking out guys from a distance Enemies go down really quick, especially in multiplayer, and it's usually at yeah. a distance. Uh, whereas in Halo, it's off, it's often more medium to close range combat. There is some long range that can support that as well, but I like this idea of having the shield and being able to sort of get up there toe to toe with enemies. And uh, I feel like it makes it a lot more interesting and exciting, and you spend less time sort of cowering behind walls or, <laughs> you know, doing the, the typical stuff you see in military shooters. So it's like this, it's this nice middle point between more realistic shooting and then something like you know doom which is like <laughs> all the way <laughs> over the top so but yeah I, I that's probably enough to say about the game itself right now i think we were all pretty happy though with how it's shaping up in that sense absolutely yeah so let's move on to uh, i guess what a lot of people want our thoughts on which is going to be image quality because it is quite interesting there's things here which we're still sort of scratching our head about, right, John? Yeah, so first of all, we should all, we should always say that, you know, this is an early test. None of this represents the final game, right? And it, they were clear about that up front. And also, you know, our input data here is also more limited since we didn't have as much time to sort of poke at it. But from what we can tell, it sort of uses a dynamic resolution scaling system mm -hmm. that most noticeably exhibits visual edges on the horizontal axis more than anything. Basically, it seems like it's scaling more aggressively on the horizontal axis rather than vertical. Uh, like, for instance, I noticed it's scaling as low as, say, 60% or so on one axis, but often hangs around 75%, which is actually 2880. Whereas in comparison, for the other axis, it really never seemed to go below 80%, which was 1800p on the Series X. But there's actually quite a few different modes. Uh, we'll touch on them all later, but basically Series X and S both have 60 and 120 hertz modes. Mm -hmm. um, and it does seem to impact resolution. So at 60 hertz, Series X is going for 2160p, but like I said, can drop to 80% on the vertical axis and as low as around 60% on horizontal, it seems. 120 hertz, though, is more difficult to test because, as you know, we still can't actually capture 4K output at 120 hertz. So to kind of look at it, you have to use the OS level capture, which is a lot more annoying. But as best as I can tell, it's sort of in the 1080p to 1440p range. So it's definitely not as sharp as the 4K60 mode. Uh, and then Series S aims for 1080p at 60 hertz, but can drop below it a little bit. Whereas uh, at 120 hertz, I noted as low as 540p in scenes like this, but it's often closer to 720p, so it's definitely noticeably blurrier than Series X. Uh, the One X, though, is actually comparable to Series X in 60 hertz mode, but obviously the frame rate is a lot lower. Uh, but One S can, of course, dip <laughs> as low as 540p as well, like this. So, yeah, the resolution does adjust kind of regularly, but that's not entirely the whole story, I'd say. It's more about the way they temporarily upscale the image, I'd say. Right, Alex? Yeah, so, John, we all spent a good amount of time lining up shots that John mastered here that was really cool of all the versions, and John's probably going to be showing a couple of these as we're talking about this. But, for example, if you put Xbox Series X, in a still image right next to the native pristine 4K image on PC, they can look very similar in terms of uh, actual 
I would say fidelity and output resolution, all these things. But uh, John can also show it quite well now where if you're turning the camera in a more intense moment of multiplayer combat on Series X, uh, you can see some of that breakup uh, happening, especially on vertical lines or I guess in transparency elements like the, the grass on the ground. Uh, so it looks less clean in motion. Uh, the question on Xbox Series X that is, and you know, obviously on the other consoles, they'll have their own compromises as well when turning the image. Um, but the question is how much do you actually notice that when you're playing the game and doing camera pans anyway? Uh, at like a normal television distance because you know there's one thing is looking at an image and like zooming in and saying Correct. okay we can see these but in the actual mo mo moment to moment gameplay are the reductions in image quality while like moving the camera around very obvious John? So my theory on this and first of all there doesn't seem to be any motion blur in there despite it appearing no. in the menus so there's no like camera blur or anything like that which would no. typically mitigate this um, but my theory here is that right now uh, most of these artifacts are only visible while rotating the camera and on most displays uh, that people are using they're going to be sample and hold so unless you're using black frame insertion or a CRT um, <laughs> the pixels essentially blur together so you can't actually really see that break up too much in motion right so it's mm -hmm. it's kind of hidden by the TV itself yeah that is interesting. so it's, yeah. it's a weird thing because like you, you get a general perception that it looks very sharp and nice during gameplay, but you can definitely notice some of it if you look closely. But most of the breakup happens while it's in fast motion, which you really want between the, the TVs themselves and just being in the thick of the action. It becomes more difficult to notice, but it is it is curious. That's for sure. And I'm, I'm very curious to see what ends up happening with the final game. So let's talk about the uh, platform comparison differences. I mean, um, we matched up all of the shots from the initial map. Uh, John, you've you've got all the data there. How do how do the versions compare? Obviously, uh, the big one is going to be Xbox One S, where there are quite a lot of uh, reductions in yes. quality, missing features. <laughs> but so, it's actually quite quite subtle when you're looking at Series S versus X, or more subtle certainly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say when looking at Xbox Series S, Series X, and Xbox One X, the game is extremely comparable across all of them. There are some slight differences with things like some shadows and some, some of the ground detail um, and things like that. But by and large, it's actually extremely comparable, I would say. Impressively so. Um, mm -hmm. But Xbox One S is where we start to see the compromises. Besides hitting lower resolutions more often than any other version, uh, it's missing things like screen space reflections. Uh, the ground details for the reduced and just in general it's sort of muddier looking and i think it, it kind of looks more like what you might expect from a switch port of a <laughs> of like an xbox one x game yeah it's you know what i mean like it kind of feels like that but at the same time we talked about this earlier i actually think this is good news because one <laughs> of the things we were worried about was that oh the game would be held back because of this original xbox one and it seems like they've actually found a really nice balance here where uh, it's clearly pushing the new machines in some interesting ways and it looks a lot better. Um, it does run on Xbox One S, but they were willing to drop the levels of detail and sort of accept the lower resolution, the lower frame rate targets, right? So mm -hmm. even though it does work and it works okay, uh, you're definitely getting a less detailed game all around. So, and again, yeah. probably not bad news. <laughs> there are there are a lot of reductions, you know. Some of the shadow maps are just right, completely gone. Well, yeah. Screen space reflections are completely gone. Um, I think the ground tessellation is reduced, uh, is either re reduced, reduced or gone. Yeah. There's also reductions in things just like shell casings that stick around and other details like that. It seems where there's just less stuff on the ground. Yeah. So um, in general, you know, they're very smart cuts though, because when you just glance at it, it actually looks very comparable. It's only when you really start digging in that you start to notice any real major differences per se. So yeah. I, I would say they've done a good job targeting all these different platforms and it feels like you get a premium experience on the machines where you would expect that. Yeah, right. speaking of premium on PC, there, you know, because uh, it's always a question of do they actually allow the PC version to scale higher? Because right. some games just leave it as like the console. And we, we did notice in doing like the back and forth between Series X, which I would consider the premium version of this game on console, um, that, you know, there's like a heightened uh, tessellation in the distance on PC, more grass on PC, 
And also uh, in the distance, you can also see that like the background detail, the geometry level is like higher there. Like the trees don't look like 2D cutouts, but they look like actual geometry. So that's just like tiny things. Uh, but how that actually carries across to the campaign is really hard to sell because you know these are smaller indoor, mostly yep, indoor yep. arenas. Mm -hmm. So just to sum up there, um, we've got Series X and One X aiming for 4K resolution, Series S and One S 1080p. But um, I think, you know, stuff like image quality differences, graphical features, uh, dynamic resolution. Um, I'm not sure One S and Series S are actually that comparable. They're very, no. very different no, 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 experiences. No. Yeah. <laughs> series S basically looks like the Series X version, just running at a lower resolution. By and large. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's a couple other very subtle differences, but it's very, very similar. So, Okay, well, let's move on to performance here, um, because this is a key way that basically 343 have managed to make last gen possible. And it is fundamentally the fact that, um, well, basically last gen, <laughs> regardless of whether you're on 1S or 1X, you're at 30 FPS, uh, presumably for CPU reasons. But things are quite a bit more interesting when you get to series consoles, right, John? Yeah, so I'll do the series consoles, then you can talk about the one consoles, <laughs> and then Alex can talk about PC. So, Woo. okay, Series X. So in my experience with that, I noticed you can either play the game at 60 frames per second or 120, and that seems to be determined by the system level setting. So if you set your system to 60 hertz, it delivers a 60 hertz output. And in my testing there, it is locked. So... If there's any hiccups, they're very, very minor, but by and large, I mean, it's 100% locked 60 frames per second, right? So that is excellent news. It's very, very smooth. Um, there's a performance and a quality mode in the menu, uh, but comparing shots side by side and looking at the actual frame rate analysis graph, that doesn't seem to necessarily be working. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that's about. And I say that because at first I thought, oh, the performance mode must enable the 120 hertz mode. Uh, but 120 hertz seem to be available in both modes. So, mm. and that's the next next thing that we tested. And this is the part where I think it's, there's still work to be done. Uh, you can see it here on the graph. Uh, all the maps basically run mainly between 100 to 120 hertz, or 20 100 to 120 frames per second. So the frame rate is quite high, but um, it's still a little bit unstable. And VRR definitely helped here, but there was still something going on that I'm not sure of. I think you saw that too, Rich. Yeah, I mean, I first booted in 120 hertz mode and uh, flagged it up in the Slack. Um, and uh, yeah, you can definitely see Judder that you shouldn't be seeing between, right. you know, north of 100 frames per second with VRR active. So that's definitely something they need to look at there. I'm not it quite sure be, why, it, why it doesn't work because this is system level stuff. Yeah, it could, could actually be, uh, for me, I mean, it couldn't just be Judder from the animation data. It could, the animations could be uh, locked at 60 uh, for some things. That would also cause Judder, even though you have a proper VRR frame rate, mm, just right. as one of the May, things. I don't, I don't know if it's that necessarily because it's mostly okay. visible in camera turns and such. Ah, okay. Well, but, uh, but, e yeah. but either way, um, you know, as we said, this is a very early technical test still, even though, you know, the game's been in development for a while, but they're still in that pre-ship state, right? So I think that they, it's high enough already that I think it should be quite solvable. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not too worried about it right now, but that's the current state of that. Xbox Series S then doesn't have a quality or performance toggle, but it does seem to support 60 and 120. Uh, the 60 FPS mode, again, locks 60 FPS, lower resolution, feels very very smooth so that's great um the 120 hertz mode though impressed me a lot actually because the resolution of course has the same hit but uh it actually manages to lock to 120 most of the time there were wow. some areas in certain maps where you would see the frame rate slip below it but it was like i, I mean just as a guesstimate i'd say it's like 95 percent there so wow. it felt very very good and in that sense this was actually the best playing version so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it felt really good to play this way. So this is how I ended up playing most of the game just on, in my free time. Was just well, this is actually quite interesting because um, it kind of rules out the CPU being a limit if Series S is doing yep. it. Uh, I think simply so. because, um, you know, Series S has a slower CPU than Series X. Uh, you know, it's only a couple of hundred megahertz, but, you know, it is there. And it's uh, producing 120 hertz more consistently. Exactly. So 
but this is why I think this will be fine for launch on both systems. So I'm, you know, by and large, I think both deliver a good experience. Um, playing on Series S with black frame insertion was excellent because in that sense, you get like zero actual like blur of the image during actual gameplay, which is really, really nice. So yeah, that was satisfying. Uh, but what about you, Rich? You played on the One X and One S. Yeah, we'll do One X first. Um, I went from the Series X to One X, and it was pretty much exactly what I thought it would be, which is to say that you get a really nice 60 FPS plus, uh, depending on the mode on Series X. Uh, but One X is 30 frames per second. I think you know, in terms of the visual presentation, it's it's up there. It looks good, um, but it is 30 frames per second. But it didn't feel quite right and um, during play and probably not so surprising that when we actually look at the performance data um, it's fine for a lot of the time but there are issues with frame pacing um, you our can see nemesis that, mm. yes um, <laughs> it's, it kind of reminds me of halo 3 in a way where you know yep. you do get those frame times that vary between 60 16 rather to uh, 50 milliseconds rather than the consistent 33 that you'd really want I mean, it is an issue. I hope they do address it. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the only thing that kind of felt a bit bad about it. Um, I think it looks the part on One X. The it problem does. is, yeah, the problem is though that if you're in a multiplayer game with people playing at 60 or even 120, possibly 240 on PC, um, you're badly disadvantaged. And I think. The experience is kind of compromised in a way where I wouldn't really want to play it. But yeah, that's that's the lie of the land. Pretty much where expected, really. I mean, it's got the GPU grunt to do 30 frames per second, and um, 30 frames per second is the necessary cut you'd expect to cover the CPU deficit between the generations. One, one final thing to say about uh, Xbox One X is that, similar to Series X, it does have the performance and quality toggle. And again, and again, similar to our Series X, it doesn't seem to do anything at this time. I mean, it is there, so I'm presuming there'll be something in the final game that will actually reflect a difference, but not in this technical preview. Let's move on to Xbox One S now, where it's similar situation. Um, you're looking at 30 frames per second, but performance seems to be on the cusp um, for a lot more of the experience and when it seems to be struggling you get a lot more of the of the poor frame pacing the inconsistency kind of makes it feel a bit sort of wobbly and um, I think there are latency implications there it just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. you're right John you know, it kind of looks the part for the most uh, you know generally speaking it kind of passes muster but when things are really busy um, the dynamic resolution comes down. That seems to coincide with the bad frame pacing. So there's just a lack of consistency generally there. And you're kind of getting the feeling that it's just about getting there, but the hardware is sort of kicking and screaming as a result. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And like I've said earlier, I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's still well, that's the issue, it's still, isn't it? It's still playable on there for sure. Um, but I feel yeah. like most serious Xbox fans will have probably upgraded by then, so hopefully. Absolutely, yeah. But I do think also that there are um, implications here for the campaign. I mean, I only played that first map, which doesn't look that challenging. Maybe no. at a systems level, it, it might have you know quite significant overhead that could cause issues. But the content didn't really seem to be that challenging. And if we're moving into a campaign that does have things like you know dynamic time of day, dynamic shadows, tons of um, AI. I, yeah, I am sort of um, puzzling as to how they're going to uh, achieve that. But you know, it's okay. You know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, Alex, let's talk about um, PC performance, because there's a lot of oddities here and things that uh, 343 are going to need to address for final code, right? Yeah, for sure. So uh, it's really hard to actually judge in any reasonable way or useful way uh, the actual performance that we might be expecting on release from this uh, PC uh, preview we just had here, because when you get in game immediately, and I'm showing footage here of uh, one of the just, you know, the normal gameplay, uh, you can see even on this like totally uncomplex map, 
uh, at, at the initial one that you could play on, that it's dropping below uh, 60 FPS on an RTX 3090 Core i9 10900K. Uh, and the reason why I'm pointing this out, you know, game, not every game runs at 4K 60, of course, but if you look at the GPU utilization, you can see that something is not right at all. The, the game, for some reason, regardless of your GPU CPU configuration, will not utilize your GPU in a proper proper manner. So we can't actually get really good performance characteristics out of this beta, other than to say it seems like an RTX 3090 can do 4K uh, 60, and I would say probably down to like a RTX 3070, RTX 2080 Ti, and then from there on, you know, you would have to probably make reductions to resolution and or some of the settings to uh, be pushing that 4K 60 moniker. Which, by the um, way, Alex, I should chime in. It is worth pointing out that the fact that the PC is in the state it is in right now is also something that bodes well for the console release, right? For sure, uh, yeah. Because it just shows that there is still lots of optimization work to be done here. And in its current state, it's more, perhaps more demanding than you would expect. Yeah, it's it's just not utilizing the hardware properly. I'm pretty sure this is not yeah. at all what the game's going to be like on launch. Um, another thing that uh, is very noticeable is when I initially played the game, I was playing on a 4K60 output uh, with uh, VSync and the you know in in game VSync selected as well as uh, using their dynamic resolution slider with a maximum. When you have VSync set in game, it sets a maximum um, frame rate cap to exactly what your output refresh rate is. Uh, and this would cause issues in its own. Uh, their frame rate cap, however they're doing it, is not actually capping to your proper refresh rate sync. It's always capping about, uh, on average, one to two frames per second lower. So at uh, 60 FPS, even with VSync on at 60 FPS, the 60 FPS cap is gonna be causing the game, when you're just standing still, to be fluctuating between 58 and 59 FPS. Uh, it's kind of like Mario Kart 8 on the Wii yeah. U. Which uh, pe people <laughs> joked about, like, oh, it's only one frame, but that matters, oh, it makes the game it matters terrible, a lot though. because it yeah. just means you're getting a lot of extra duplicate frames in there, so it makes it look stuttery. So yeah, it's and not I, good. I also tested this uh, at 120 hertz as well, too, while uh, using the in-game VSync. And I can show here, John can show it on screen as well. You put it down to 60, and you can see that it's never actually staying at 60 FPS. You put it down to 30 or 40, it's never actually at those numbers uh, it is. And it, this applies also to using the frame rate cap at 120 FPS or higher. So they need to make sure that their frame rate capping system is actually capping to the proper refresh rate integral so that you don't have um, VSync going crazy and causing this frame pacing issue. Just to sort of uh, chop in for a second there, Alex, it was fixed if you used driver level VSync, right? Yeah, yeah, that's was what I was about to say. Uh, so <laughs> one thing you can do is you can turn off, uh, turn off the in-game VSync, and also then definitely turn off the in-game FPS cap, which you can only do if you turn off VSync. And in this place, uh, you definitely should use driver level VSync or just let G-Sync take care of it with an external FPS cap. Because in this footage, as you're seeing here, on one of the other multiplayer maps, um, this really cool indoor sci-fi level, um, you've got like on this exact same setup, none of this weird frame pacing issue and really, really good performance. <laughs> good stuff. Um, well, let's sum this up. Some final thoughts. Um, John. Um, yeah, so I was suitably impressed with this in terms of, I feel like they, they are on the correct road to recapture the feeling of classic Halo in a way that Halo 4 and Halo 5 did not. Uh, you know, I, I had fun playing a multiplayer style game for the first time in a long time. Uh, like where even after done capturing, I did play some additional matches of this and was having a great time with it. It's, it's genuinely fun because it feels like there's there's something to learn from it, especially as you start to uncover tools. I didn't even get to capture some of the better stuff uh, because I was just playing for fun, but you know, once you start to get into the grappling hook stuff, it's it's great. So I'm actually very eager for that, and I'm also eager to see what the campaign ends up being like because that's still kind of the bigger draw for me. But I'm just happy to see that um, it is so far looking significantly better than last year, and it does at least seem like that extra year that they needed to finish the game uh, makes a lot of sense, and I'm glad that it was delayed. Alex. So my final thoughts here is that I think, uh, based upon what we've seen, uh, it looks quite a bit better than the campaign footage that we saw last year that I critiqued uh, so heavily. Materials look better. 
you know, they're using SSR now. You can see a lot of that texture detail coming through, especially on PC, which looks fantastic, I think. Um, in terms of the way they're doing lighting, it's really hard to say how they're going to be doing it in the campaign because I think there's static lighting in these multiplayer maps. So the campaign could still look different. Uh, don't quote me there necessarily that everything's going to look 100% better. Uh, it's hard to know until we see the campaign again. Uh, but like John, I just think uh, this was a really fun beta. The gameplay felt... L <sighs> It didn't feel like classic Halo 100% because, you know, there's still things like Sprint in there. Uh, but it is so much more fun to play a game like this than I think your average Call of Duty because there's like weapon pickups on the map. There's different gadgetry you can use, you know, like the overshield. There's like really satisfying animations in there. I just felt like, yeah, this is coming to a place that feels like Halo, but feels also rather modern and fresh. Uh, so I had a great time with this uh, little tech preview. Yeah, the only thing I've really got to add is that uh, I did play almost exclusively on the last gen consoles and um, it works, but I think it's a great time to upgrade, basically, yeah. uh, <laughs> because I think the game is just fundamentally vastly improved by running on series hardware and, and PC. So, yeah, that was an interesting exercise for me because I, I do enjoy seeing the extent of an engine scalability. And I think they've made some smart choices here. And I think in some cases they've made some choices which were basically inevitable given the technological makeup of the last gen machines. And they are noticeable and they do detract from the quality of the experience. And it's actually quite interesting that we're in a sort of cross-gen period, but it very definitely is just a cross-gen period from a software perspective. Because, you know, I looked on Amazon looking to see if I could actually buy an Xbox One S. <laughs> I mean, we know the One X was discontinued. Uh, there was never any official sort of end of line for the One S, but, you know, I search for One S on Amazon, I get a Series S, which is, you know, the way it should be, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, if this is a sort of transition game, um, yeah, definitely play it on the new machines is, is my number one takeaway uh, from, from this particular weekend. But I think we're going to leave it there. So thanks so much for joining me on this. And if you enjoyed the content, please do like, subscribe, share, ring the bell for instant, instant, forever instant <laughs> notifications. Uh, DF supporter program, join us, join the team, speak to us on Discord, uh, check out early access, support DF Retro. Let it be everything it can be. It's pretty awesome stuff we're doing there. Lots of bonus content. And of course, hashtag for seeing quality downloads from <laughs> digitalfoundry.net. <laughs> but that's all from us for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.